There we go. Doing Facebook. All right. Looks like we are live. Okay. Welcome, everyone. All right. How are you on this fine Saturday evening? Okay. So tonight's topic that we're going to be talking about is how to not lose your shit. Ah. So as a business owner, as um, somebody who struggles with emotions, um, not that necessarily that business owners are struggling with the emotions, but, you know, going through dealing with other people's emotions a lot of times is really trying and it can be a lot. And if you've been through um, past trauma, you've experienced things and you have some unhealed wounds, I can promise you, it won't take much to get somebody to get you to lose your shit. So that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. I'm going to be giving you some tips and strategies on how you can avoid that, how you can stay calm even when you're ready to lose it. All right. So if this is your first time joining me, my name is Tina. I'm a happiness coach. I help um, business owners to deal with the emotional side of business and even if you haven't experienced trauma yourself I can promise you that there's somebody on your team that has and it is probably affecting your business and costing you in ways that you can't imagine so um, hey it's welcome thank you for liking the live tap the screen share the live so Today's topic, like I said, is how not to lose your shit. So first of all is understanding the early warning signs of what's going on with you. Because regardless of what somebody else does, because I mean, think of it. Have you ever been in a situation where you know somebody's trying to get your goat and you're just like, yeah, I'm well rested. I'm feeling good. You can't touch me, dude. Like, go away. <laughs> right? But... Hey, Callum. Um, there's other times where somebody can not even be trying and they say hello in the wrong way, in the wrong tone, and you snap and you lose it. So um, understanding what that is, whether this is happening in a personal relationship or in your business, Maybe, you know, because I know I went through a period where I was working a really stressful job and I would come home and I would just rage for like 45 minutes straight, bitching about my day, everything that went on. And this is when I was aware of stuff, but I was so frustrated and felt so powerless and alone, nobody really to talk to because I couldn't really talk to my team and I couldn't talk to my higher ups because if I talked to the higher ups, then they would think that I couldn't handle things. And if I talked to my team, well, that's going to instill fear in them. And so I felt stuck. And then a lot of times I would take that and I would come home with that and I would rage and um, that wasn't good for me and it wasn't good for my relationship. And there were problems that came of that. So understanding the early warning signs of what's going on, how you're feeling, how you can stop that, and what you need to recognize. Um, so early warning signs is, do you feel tension in your body? And if you're a survivor of trauma and a business owner, you don't have time to feel the feelings in your body. You're just like, no, I got shit to do. I don't have time for this emotional nonsense. I need to get things done. And so being, and we underestimate the energetic drain it has on us to be able to contain those emotions all day. And because you know you can't lose it on your customers, you know you can't lose it on your team, you can't lose it on your coworkers or business partners because you're going to lose money if you do that. But if you recognize the signs, you recognize how you're feeling in your body, what's going on with you, and how to disengage from that. So first thing is understanding the things that can actually make you more susceptible. Um, and I was watching a bit of Brian Johnson today, so if you haven't 
uh, seen him, uh, definitely check him out. He's the guy that talks about don't die. Um, and so he talked about sleep being the number one thing. And um, I have been extremely guilty of priding myself on how little I sleep and can still function. And I'm like, geez, man, if I actually got sleep, I'd be dangerous. <laughs> um, so, and this was a result of early childhood trauma that of constantly being wakened in the middle of the night. Uh, I would, even when they tried to put me to bed earlier, I would get up in the middle of the night while everybody was asleep and I would go downstairs because I enjoyed the quiet time by myself where nobody else was around. And as a young kid in probably like grade five, three, four, five, um, I would sit and I'd listen to music. And most of the time it was like classical music and it was just something calming and soothing. We didn't have YouTube and the meditation videos and the nice relaxing music that you could do. So I only had a couple of records that I had to, uh, and tapes that I could play. And so I would do that as a way to calm myself. And, um, but this pattern of not sleeping and needing to function followed me throughout my life. And I didn't realize that that was related to trauma um, or that there was a connection between the patterns because, and, and logically, I'm like, well, geez, of course it was. Of course you were being woken up in the middle of the night and being sexually abused. So, of course, your sleep was disturbed. Of course you didn't sleep well and you had to learn to get up and function and go to school the next day as if nothing happened. And Or there was a fight because of drinking and arguments and things that happened that way. And so you had to still go on as if nothing happened. So you learn to disassociate from your feelings, learn to disassociate from your body. And this can be happening with, um, with uh, your employees as well, right? You don't know what's going on for them at home. And they might be dealing with um, an abusive spouse. They might be dealing with children that are problematic. And even if they are really good employees, it's going to affect them. It's going to bring that into your business. And I'm not saying don't hire these people because they have wonderful qualities and they can do a lot to help elevate your business. Being aware of what some of the signs of trauma are and what, uh, how it can actually affect you, how it can affect your employees, even if you yourself have not been through trauma. So understanding this, and I remember I would, um, I worked with a girl that um, I knew she argued with her husband quite a bit. Um, and I've seen people that they don't end up acting their best self. When they come into work, they're uh, a lot more hyper vigilant. They're a lot more critical. They're a lot more timid in wanting to move forward. They have trust issues. They don't want to respond. Um, so there's all those kind of things. And then, of course, even if there isn't a trauma response, geez, in this day and age, it is so common to talk about how little we sleep and, um, I did this when I was on midnight shift um, when I first started working full time is on Fridays and Sundays, I would go 24 hours with no sleep. And um, it was because I worked midnight shift. So I'd finish on Friday mornings at like 730 in the morning. And then I would go home, I'd pack up the car and then drive a couple of hours up to the cottage, the trailer, I mean, uh, that we had, and we'd go camping and I'd unpack the car when I got there, sit down, make dinner, unwind, meet and greet people that I hadn't seen all week. And then um, I would sleep in late the next day. And then Sunday, whatever time I woke up on Sunday, I'd pack up the car, I'd put everything back in, I'd go home, unpack the car, and then by that time, it was time to go in for midnight shift on Sunday night. Hey, May, welcome. 
Um, so this was something that I did and I was on midnight shift for four years and that was just normal to me and I thought it was cool of how little that I was able to sleep. Um, and I carried that pattern on um, and even when I was on a particular work project, um, I prided myself on the fact that I would stay no matter how late because we'd have these um, one-on-one -on -one meetings during the day and all that kind of stuff. And then at night, I had to catch up on tracking all the data so that I could report for it the next morning. And there were all these different things that we had to um, kind of put in place. And this was a project that went on for six weeks and it was extremely challenging. Um, a lot of volatility, a lot of emotions got brought up in this, not just mine, but everybody else around because um, things weren't planned out properly and then uh, extra work was put on already overburdened departments. And the way that it was communicated got everybody's back up. At that time, I didn't have a whole lot of power and it ended up that I was coming in for 8 a.m. and then I would work until 1, 2, some nights I was there till 3 a.m. and then back in at 8 a.m. the next morning as if nothing happened. Now, everybody else was concerned around me, but I'm like, this is, this is normal for me. This is what I did. I thrive in this kind of challenge and um, until I didn't. And it wasn't so much the experience and all of the stuff that happened. What happened is it weakened my mindset. It weakened my beliefs about my capabilities of what I could do. And it ended up causing me to um, talk negatively. There was a lot of self-criticism. And I got to the point where um, by the end of the week, I wasn't looking at the things I was doing right. I wasn't looking at what I was accomplishing and seeing that as um, progress and success. All I was seeing is all the things that still had yet to be done that wasn't getting done or wasn't getting done well. And um, so I don't know, but I'm pretty sure most business, business owners can relate to that. As you're running your business, especially if you're a small business and you maybe only have a few team members, um, it just feels like there's nonstop things that you have to do and being able to manage those emotions around that and not fall into that negative self-talk is something that can be really challenging and having somebody that you can speak to about what's going on with you is super, super valuable because the person that I had in my corner that was usually rooting for me and I was rooting for her, she was actually off on vacation and I told her to take it because she, otherwise she wouldn't have got that time with her husband um, and she had already skipped the first planned vacation that she had and he had limited time. So I told her, listen, I'll take one for the team. Don't worry, I got it. We've got all these other things. but. I was not anticipating the emotions that were coming up from the other um, leadership team that were much higher. These, like I was assistant man, no, I was manager at the time. And these were like VPs that I was dealing with. <laughs> and I was just like, shit. Um, and so it seemed like I was low man on the totem pole and all the shit was rolling downhill at the time. So I understand um, those emotions that you can deal with and it was because of not sleeping properly and um, also letting that get to my mindset because what ended up happening that caused the breakdown is over and over and over in my head, um, it just kept on loop. It doesn't matter what I do, it's not enough, it's not enough, it's not enough and that kind of went on over and over and over again. and. Um, I had forgotten at that time some tools that I used to use. And so you can learn some of the tips and uh, tricks and strategies, and you can know all of that stuff, but a lot of times we need to be reminded of those, or we need to be in a situation where um, it's dire enough that we need to start dusting these things off. And so a couple of years after that, I started um, a coaching program that I was working to help closers heal past trauma because um, 
when we would do role plays, after the role plays, we would get to talking and we, some people would share with me. And this was not uncommon for me because people did that in the corporate environment as well. So some of those same VPs that um, I struggled with they also opened up and shared a lot of vulnerable things with me of what was going on with them that they were struggling with that they couldn't really talk about, that they wouldn't really talk about. And whether that was a relationship issue or um, family issues, whatever it was. Um, and just being that safe space for them to open up, talk about things, give them a different perspective, uh, a way of seeing things that helps them uh, feel seen and heard and also um, that they can see a different way to actually solve the problem that they didn't have before and that doesn't happen unless you have somebody that you can really open up to and so some of the tools that I had to dust off and this is the one that I wanted to talk about today was the tool of HALT. Um, halt, actually. So it's hungry, angry, lonely, tired, or sick. If you're any of those five things, that is a screaming red flag for you to stop whatever it is you're doing. Halt. Do not go forward. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. You need to step back, buy yourself some time before you lose your shit because you will cause so much more damage and it doesn't take very much. It can just take, uh, you know, 10 minutes of disengaging from the situation, um, making sure that you clearly communicate what it is that you're needing in that moment that maybe, you know what, I just need to take 10 minutes. I need to gather my thoughts. I need to uh, just get some fresh air. I need to go for a quick walk. I will come back. We will talk about this, but I just need to step away from this. And most of the time, especially in business, people will respect you for that. But there will be times where people just will not understand that and they will keep pressing and pressing and pressing. And during that time, that is where you're going to need to compartmentalize. You're going to need to stay calm. And that is where I would use box breathing. And that is taking a deep breath in, holding it. Uh, sorry, taking the deep breath in for four seconds, holding it for four seconds, and then releasing it for four seconds. Doing that four times in a row of just slowing actively slowing down your breathing to get you to calm down. It brings oxygen to the brain, allows you to think more clearly. It helps your nervous system calm down to be able to recognize what's going on, that you are not under threat unless somebody is physically in your space, then that's a different story. And that is a whole other technique that I am not qualified to be able to help you with other than making sure that you stay calm. I know staying calm is going to help you more than hurt you. Um, so be now, if you have to be in that moment, you have to stay calm, you have to stay focused and not reactive. What I want you to do is over and over in your head, say, do not react, do not react, do not react. Agree to, don't say agree to disagree. Say, I hear what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. That makes sense to me. Now, don't say it if that's not true. Don't argue back. Don't try to fight. Don't try to discount or prove you are right. What I want you to do is recognize, um, even if you think the person is completely dead wrong, say, that's an interesting perspective and you could be right about that. I'm going to need some more time to think about that. Can we get back together and talk about this at another time? And so giving that um, space, allowing your acknowledging what they're saying, you're acknowledging what's going on. And then of course, if they still continue, you may have to put in more forceful boundaries. It wouldn't be the first time I've had to actually hang up on a customer. <laughs> and um, But I also communicated ahead of time saying, um, this kind of communication is not working for me, that I do not deserve to be spoken to in this way. I'm going to hang up now. 
and I hang up and I do not answer. They may call back. They might even be more pissed off, but I've clearly communicated what's going on. I set the boundary and I walked away. And I've done that with a VP before <laughs> of that, you know what? And, and I was just a lowly customer service rep back then. But I also knew that I did not deserve to be talked to in that way. And when I did that, they had to take full ownership of their reaction. Because if they are reacting badly, they are lashing out at you, whether that's a customer, a spouse, a friend, a coworker, whoever it is, if they are lashing out at you, they are having a fear reaction. And I really need you to look at that as they are in need of love. They are in need of understanding, kindness, compassion. If you are having a fear reaction, then you are in need of kindness, care, love, compassion, all of that kind of stuff. And knowing what it is that you need to take care of yourself in that particular moment is going to serve you so much better than continuing or fighting back or needing to be right because you can be right or you can be happy. And for those of you that are just jumping in now, I'm a happiness coach. So um, there's a lot of things that I will let go just because it is not worth the fight. It is not worth the argument. However, this doesn't mean to allow yourself to get walked on, to be a people pleaser, all of those kind of things. And if you do err on more of that kind of side, and it seems like every time you do go to speak up that you just get kicked back down when you do try to speak up, then those are some different skills that we could work on to be able to help you um, be in a better space. But it is the halt that is the most important when you have a volatile situation, hungry, angry, lonely, tired. This isn't about the other person. Uh, this is about you, what you're experiencing, and what your emotions are. You know if you're hungry. And there's been times where it's like, okay, I didn't get to eat lunch. And whatever you're saying is going in one ear and out the other. I'm not paying attention. You know what? I'm getting snippy. I'm getting irritated. I want this meeting to end, all of that kind of stuff. And what I learned to do was be able to communicate um, to say that I need this additional time. I need this space. And so being able to do that is something that is important. And stepping back from that situation is a good way to make sure that you don't add additional damage to the situation, that you aren't causing more problems um, that you're just going to have to clean up later. So this is actually a time saver. It may seem like you're delaying the situation, but when you take those steps back, you don't want to step forward again and, or not avoid, um, continue to avoid it and not talk about it. You do absolutely need to go back and talk about the situation and clear up those issues. Um, so making sure that you follow the hungry, angry, lonely, tired, or sick situation and be able to recognize those signs within yourself, learn to disengage um, and not argue back, do not react, ask for what it is that you need, more time, more ability to take that step back, understand what's going on with you, and gather your thoughts, and figure out what's going on for you. How do you need to be supported in this situation? Why are you reacting with fear in this situation? Why are you getting your back up? Because even one of two things, the stuff that the person's saying, you're agreeing with, and that's why you're reacting. And you might get defensive, you might take offense to what they've said, and in order to take offense, you actually need to physically take on their perspective, their thought process. And it causes you to get your back up and defensive and um, fight back with those kind of things. And the thing is, it's 80-20 rule. 20% is from what's going on today. 80% is something that's gone on from the past. You've had a similar experience that caused similar emotions to come up with you. And we would work together to be able to identify those, 
um, and be able to help you work through those so that you can move through it and get your energy back and for you to actually be happier because when you are happier, I can promise you, you are going to be so much more productive. You are going to lead in a much better way, much more effective way. It's going to save you time. It's going to save you money. And when your team sees you operating in this way, they will do what you do. They won't do what you say. They will do what you do. So these are tools that I actually practice on a daily basis for myself. And once I realized that I needed to dust these off and that I wasn't done with the healing journey and knowing that I needed to make sure that I'm implementing these, that I am walking the walk, not just talking the talk. So um, guys, that is going to be the training for tonight. It's a little bit shorter tonight, but like I said, I really wasn't feeling that well um, and I needed to get a little bit extra rest. So guys, I hope you found this helpful. If you're just jumping in now, hey Colin, good to see you. Uh, if you're just jumping in now, make sure you go over to my YouTube channel, which is Coach Tina B125. Click on the subscribe button so you get notified because this is where I upload the replays of the trainings, um, and you can follow along and be aware of what's going on with the coaching program, what's going on with the trainings that I do daily and um, you can take something that I've shared every day and make sure that you implement it and start using it in your daily life so that you can shift from being in frustrated, angry, ready to lose your shit kind of emotions to being in a much happier, calmer, stronger, more effective, more productive space. So guys, with that, I'm going to wrap it up for tonight and we will talk to you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.